That's Belkin, and we're back with another video. This is my laptop, GT73VR. I did a video last week when I showed how to do a repaste on it, and I replaced the paste and the thermal pads with Noctua NTH1 thermal paste. And everything was okay, but I also noticed that my temperatures are wildly off. Even with the fans currently maxed, and my CPU isn't really overclocked, but to like 4 gigahertz, which is not very big of an overclock, to me at least. Um, so here we're going to tear it down again, and we're going to replace the thermal paste with Thermal Grizzly thermal paste, and I'm going to switch out the thermal pads. I have one millimeter in there now. I'm going to try to see... Um, if replacing them with half a millimeter thermal pad will even out the core temperature as we go to a screensaver. Lovely, lovely. That's going to be the goal. We'll be right back. So when I pulled this cooler off, what I'd found, let's go over here in the light. Let there be plenty of light. Or let it be blow all the way out. So, what I'd found is I found this pad is not how I installed it but I found this part is up over this back part which not should not be like that and if I can really get in there without getting my hands in the damn way if you can see here is prints of like I believe the MOSFETs of the CPU there's only a print right here and that's it then this was up here so I'm thinking that when I put it on there and adjusted it that this pad slipped and got stashed or squashed underneath this pad right here and that caused the CPU to not sit on the die evenly and as why there's no pads on this I don't know because I don't see what they connect on the board so looking at the die if I read it correctly You've got 0, 1, 2, and 3 as for the cores. And my cores were 0 and 3. No. 0 and 1 were hot. Which would be... Which would be these two cores right here. Which those MOSFETs, or right, I believe that's his MOSFETs, were sitting right here, and I don't think the cooler was sitting that evenly. Um, but you can see the paste that I had did a nice little job. So now, what we're going to do is, um, in this video, I actually have 91% versus the 50 that I had the last time. So now we're going to use that. We're going to wipe this die and wipe the cooler down. I got some new pads. These are one millimeter. I think I'm gonna stick with the one millimeter and reassemble this. And we're gonna see where, if that gets the temperature range back down to um, a more normal range across the cores. And we're back, we're back on. So let's see, did it work? Stupid windows. And, as you can see, right now, we're only 4 degrees difference. But this is at idle at 4 gigahertz. Let's one-handed typing. Thank you, Windows Search. Let's do a little test with Intel Extreme, shall we? So, you can hear the fans start to spin up right here 4 gigahertz 4 cores 99% you 100% utilization let's look at the temperatures and yeah they're no longer differentiated although all cores have 100% we're using 56 watts at most it looks like 57 so we're gonna let this run for the next five minutes and see what we get when we come back. 
And we're back. We have like a minute left. And as you can see, XTU's been running. Although it looks kind of green right now. When you might need some better light. But so as you can still see, after five minutes of not focusing, hey, that looks better. My highest temperature is sorry for the shaky hand. This uh, 86 degrees, the lowest is 81, a range of 5 degrees, sure as hell beats the 100 degrees to the 74 degrees that I had earlier in the video. But now, we're also going to try the overclocking this a little bit more and see what I can really do. I also like to point out that I also changed the thermal pass from Noctua NTH1 to the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. That may have played a role, as maybe the uneven heat pad as well. Now, as you can see, we're at 4.4 gigahertz. You can hear the fans starting to wrap up. This is an ex Intel Extreme Utility. Just a simple test, no IDA. Let's see what our temperatures look like. Oh, I saw a 91. Ninety-one. No thermal throttling though. We're still 4.4-ish gigahertz. 100% load. And we'll come back in the next four minutes. And here we are in the final 30-ish seconds. And as you can see, temperature, highest ones, 97 degrees. You can also hear the fans going full tilt, which is about 4,800 RPMs. Thermal throttling now, we're still at 4.4 gigahertz. And as you can see, I've been running for the last five-ish minutes. Only like four seconds left. So, there you have it. This is part two of this repaste. If you have wildly different uh, CPUs, temperatures, might want to see if the seat heat sink is sitting on the die correctly. Any questions? Love to hear what your thoughts are and those questions in the comments below. Thank you.